Okay, we're going to go on the record. Okay, good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, October 18, 2021. This, we are on the record. This is a ad hoc committee meeting to investigate Suez water. We got it scheduled 11 a.m. start. The clock on my computer is showing 11.02. But before we do that, in effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by the city and state authorities, the city of Jersey City has canceled all public meetings and closed non-essential services as of March 16, 2020 until further notice. As a result, this ad hoc committee meeting will be held virtually as a video conference with public access. And again, we had a scheduled 11 a.m. start. The clock on my computer was showing 11.02. I have a roll call for the commencement of this ad hoc committee meeting. Councilperson Prendary. Here. Councilperson Baggiano. Here. Councilperson Solomon. Here. Councilperson Lavaro. Sean, I'm going to have to disconnect and then plug back in because I'm frozen, but I'm okay. here. Very good. Councilperson Rivera is not here. And Council President Waterman. Here. Okay. Sorry. So we have five council members present at 11.02 a.m. On behalf of Council President Waterman, in accordance with New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the posting on the bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall, which is the schedule of this meeting. And in addition, at the time of its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday. Excuse me, that wasn't on Friday. I apologize on Wednesday, October 13th, 2021 at 1 p.m. to the Municipal Council, Mayor, Business Administrator, Corporation Council and the local newspapers and posted on the city's website so I can certify as to total compliance with the Sunshine Law. This ad hoc committee was established by resolution number 21-688 on September 22nd, 2021. So I am now going to turn it over to the council president, as I normally do, and then she can turn it over to whoever she feels fit. And council president. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone on this Monday morning. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Solomon and from because he is the chair and uh, we'll follow his lead. I know this is a passion of him and Laura, so we want to make sure we give them the support that they need and let them know we're 100% behind them. So um, Councilman Solomon, take the lead. Thank you, Council President. And uh, did everyone see the agenda? Um, we got sent out, I just wanna make sure everyone has seen it. Mm -hmm. You also have the ability, Council Person Solomon, to uh, bring it up uh, if, just in case we need to defer to it. Sure, let me let me try to uh, load that up. Just give me one. Oh, sec. we actually have Amanda. I can, I can oh, have okay. Amanda. Okay. Amanda, if you would. Be so kind. Great, thank you. Um, so we have the uh, just starting with the objective to review failed systems in previous natural disasters in the last two years from Suez and, and MUA and have the committee come up with and agree with a concrete list of shortcomings and current legislation and procedure and then understanding of the recurring problems and proposed solutions to them. And then for the agenda, wanted to just go through an introduction, which we're sort of doing now. Um, then number two is the overview. And that was basically us discussing um, each of us, what our issues were from um, both this last thing with Hurricane Ida, but also before. Um, and it, we can just start taking notes and start creating a whole list of everything that we heard both personally as council people, but then you know what our constituents have reported to us as well. And yeah, have everyone have a chance to sort of provide all of their feedback on that. And then that sort of agenda item two and three, I think we can kind of probably do those together as a combination mm -hmm. of things. And then um, agenda item four is for us to then come up with a list of our goals and what we think the sort of schedule of meetings will be moving forward. So we can basically have our, our plan and approach and timeline for all of this. So the goal really here is to walk out of the meeting with one is the full list of everything that we're concerned about um, what our goals are to try to resolve those concerns, 
and then a you know sort of tentative schedule for the committee so we have a sense and a clear end date on this uh, as well um any does anyone have any questions on the agenda or things that they want to add or consider amending to the agenda no no i'm, I'm good i'm clear I, who is it that's going to be say, saying the 35 dollars like like oh bernard i think you're uh off uh, not muted All righty, uh, Rolando, uh, you're good. Uh, Rolando, um, Mira, uh, Rich, you guys have any agenda items you'd add or want to change? No, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll have some points I want to bring up. I'll wait. OK, great. So then let's just go to agenda item yeah. two. Um, so I can start with my couple concerns mm -hmm. that I've seen, and then we'll basically turn it over to each of the four mm -hmm. other council folks and give everyone a chance. And I think we can combine two and three here and basically list your personal concerns and then as well as anything you've heard from your constituents. Um, so I think for me, a couple just things going back to the E. coli a year ago, um, or a year and a half ago now, or a year, a couple months, um, there were a couple things that were concerning to me. The first is just our emergency communications approach. Um, okay. How do you make sure that people hear that there's a boil water advisory or other form of important communication? And I think with Suez, you know, they're focused on um, the rate payers, so the people who are homeowners or property owners, but that leaves out both residential and commercial tenants. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do we make sure as many people as possible get these notices as quickly as possible? Um, and I think there's some ideas that we have out there that we can look into, um, but I really just think, you know, emergency communications from Suez and then having that obviously be coordinated with OEM and MUA, I think it's just really, really important. And I, you know, my experience was that lots of people, especially the for the E. coli, but also during Ida, you know, didn't hear about these notifications in the in as timely a match manner as we would have liked. Um, so that that's sort of a key piece for me for us to resolve. I think second is then internal communications with us as the council, um, with mm -hmm. and you know OEM. Suez and MUA. And uh, I think Councilman Prenzeri has mentioned before that, you know, when we were with PSE and G, we all have a direct point of contact. Um, we don't have that right now with Suez. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't really know who we're who 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 to go to for information. Are we going to MUA? Are we going to Suez? Are we going to mm -hmm. OEM? And how is the council being, you know, as, as sort of the you know, we're we're getting all of the input from the constituents. How are we being briefed on all of this? Um, so we can get accurate information out to the to the community and then um, convey information back to folks. Um, and then obviously for Ida, the water distribution, right, was a clear, huge, huge problem of if we do ever have a either a small scale or a large scale boil water advisory, what are our plans in place to make sure that the people can get access to water? Um, uh, you know, how are they, how are we making sure that that we have plans in place. And I know that was a, you know, a kind of a, you know, Suez, I think sounds like they overpromised and under delivered and then, you know, a bunch of different government and entities stepped in to try to figure things out um, on that front. Um, so those are, those are kind of three big things for me at the top to list, but then why don't I, I pause here and then let everybody else kind of share what their items are. Um, you, Rich, you want to go first? Go for it. Well, you talked about emer emergency communications. Years ago, when we had a problem, we had the police cars riding around with the loudspeakers on, <clears throat> notifying each and every community throughout the city. And I think we should go back to that. That's one of the greatest forms of communications. People hear it. They see the police car riding down the block going very slow, announcing there's a, a water problem, boil your water. I think we should go back to that. That should be one step we should follow. And uh, yep. <clears throat> secondly, mm -hmm. you know, the use of the internet and Facebook and everything else. But that was a very effective way of notifying people throughout the entire city. And I think we should go back to that. I mean, I, we will, we're going to list all of this stuff, so we'll have the notes and everything. But I mean, I agree. I think it's it's low tech, but it's 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 a really good way for people to hear, right? And, and then spread mm -hmm. um, So. All right, Rich, are there other, do you want more broadly, like what did you hear both during Ida and then the other boil water advisories from your constituents? You know, what, what were the concerns that you heard from, from them during that time? 
Well, mostly, I, I'll tell you the truth. People were quite happy. We had a lot of water up by the county courthouse. People were coming. We went through, I think, three or four truckloads of water, and uh, people were quite happy with it. And they also had a barrel there where you can pump water into a container and stuff. But uh, the th problem with the uh, Suez is people have to be notified right away that there's a problem. And like I said, uh, the fastest and easiest way is through the police and uh, the various forms of communication we have today in the internet and everything. But otherwise, uh, that's about it for me. Uh, sure. Well, you know, let me let me just jump in. Um, for me, I heard a lot of um, miscommunication. Uh, a lot of people were not aware even that there was a water advisory out there um, for some time. Then they heard about it, you know, and at the time um, it, it made them more uh, frightened because, you know, they said, well, I've been drinking this water and I haven't heard, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, for me, it was the communication. A lot of people have did not hear about the water advisory. And then after that, the communication to distribute water that was not, you know, uh, communicated well at all. You know how, you know, would they distribute it? Um, people were very upset um, because some of them were out there without buckets. They they thought it was just bottled water. It was a mess uh, as far as their communication. So for me, it was communications. Um, I heard a lot of uh, discomfort and dis, you know, dis displeasure with the communication from Suez. Or MUA, you know, uh, I think um, the community need to understand each uh, role from Suez to MUA. To me, it was communications. They were not happy at all. I'll go ahead and jump in. This is Councilman Prinzeri. Um, agree with everything that's already been said. Also, um, I want to add that there was an incident about a year and a half ago where there was um, a major water main break um, over on the northern end of the city that affected wards B and wards A, and I think maybe a little bit of C. Um, so this was even before the um, the E. coli issue and then Ida. Um, and again, we had some similar problems with communication and the, like it took it took a number of hours for the water trucks to come out. Um, I feel like for whatever reason, maybe because it was a smaller area, not citywide, communication did get out. Um, but where we had issue there too was with just like general placement of water trucks and not internally coordinating, right? So Councilwoman Ridley and I had talked about where we could put water trucks that were maybe bordering the two wards to also maximize access to people. Um, so I think that some of that comes like from logistically coming up with a plan and identifying, you know, like top 10 locations that are easy for people to get to, whether they're by public transit hubs um, or, you know, like, like a large parking lot where people can go. I would even go back to Hurricane Sandy where they set up a power station where you could come and charge your electronics and get ice and get water all in the uh, in and around the light rail parking lot. Um, so that was something that worked really well back at Sandy. Um, I think with the communications, um, also I think it's great that they eventually put out bilingual, but we say this with everything that we do here in Jersey City, we need to have, in my opinion, like a translation department for the city. Mm -hmm. um, this is something we've also talked about with Director Flanagan, um, just because of the, you know, we don't have top two language, we have like top five language. And I think that especially it, now considering the way that we've diversified our police department, there's opportunity there for people that are bi or multilingual to also help with um, communicating out. I mean, I know you want to walk the line between, you know, communicating information and not inciting panic. But when you don't have communication, people start to take uh, their own perception or, or what they hear on the street and that doesn't work. Um, I'm glad to hear that they had a number of trucks up in C. I know that wards A and B were the first to get the water buffaloes, but we were only left with two cases. We were also left with no one from Suez to help us distribute. So if I had not been there for the drop off, if um, someone from the MUA had not been there for the drop off, it would have been a free for all with no communication, no order, no anything. No information being communicated out to residents. Nobody's a point as a point person saying we're down to our last three cases in the pallet of water. When can we expect more? 
or how can we communicate that better out to residents that they need to come with their own containers because people were just showing up with carts expecting mm -hmm. bottled water right mm -hmm. and i think that that you know if you don't know if you can't guarantee then don't say it have that be you know something that comes in addition to because when we had the water trucks going back to that water main break about a year and a half ago people knew to bring containers because they knew that that's what it was it was a water truck where they could collect water so they wouldn't have to do the boil water advisory or they actually you know then it was a complete shut off so they so they had access to water altogether um and i think that um you know the the, the this the, the complete lack of internal and external communication made it really difficult because you figure you have nine council people calling you know the same people that takes up time that eats away from getting protocols in place so you know i even go back to the old-fashioned phone tree when your neighborhood association somebody has an issue somebody calls down the list and everybody gets notified you know, we can modernize it and have it, you know, a text message tree or whatever it is that would look like, but some of those old fashioned ways of getting out communication really do end up working the best. Um, but that's, but, but it was just like, the, and, and, and being told that we were gonna get more and then finding out that there was nothing to get. So having to coordinate with health and human services, having to coordinate with my fellow council people, you know, I don't like, is it possible for Suez to have created a voucher system where they just, people can go into their store and go get the water that they need and then build back to Suez. That would have been a really great way to, to manage some of this, in my opinion. We were able to do it with Tropicana because the city has an account, they're a vendor of ours. So that made it very easy to move that forward. Um, I know that Suez had also said that internally it was hard for them to get some of like, like a, a forklift and things like that. Well, if that's, if you know that's an issue, plan with the city or plan with the county so those things are in place so you don't have to scramble when you need them. Like, like now's our opportunity to set up a comprehensive plan and a guidebook moving forward. So that's, I'll stop there. <laughs> all right, we got all, all that. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, Councilman Navarro. Thank you, uh, Councilman Solomon. Um, and, uh, so um, let, let me begin. I'm, I'm not going to um, I'll reiterate what other people have already talked about. Uh, by and large, generally agree with uh, most of the other suggestions and recommendations there um, or, or concerns that were raised. Um, let, let me begin with a couple of things that maybe weren't raised at this point. And um, um, I want to go back and I think don't think it's been mentioned yet to date. Um, the the presumption was that um, the the water and the fact that it became contaminated in some way and requiring it to be under a boil water advisory was because it, it was as a result of Ida that there was something that uh, caused a, um, a collapse or something that affected my memory serves me that uh, ultimately some uh, contaminants kind of find its found its ways into into the into the water supply in that sense um, and then ultimately the the testing came out um, um, negative there or um, uh, in indicating that there was potential contamination. Um, and so um, I believe it was 2018 that we allocated some $550 million um, for, for upgrades to our water and sewer systems, um, authorizing the MUA in that regard. And some of that money was specifically dedicated to um, the Bhutan Reservoir and our water supply for the protection of our water supply. Um, so I think um, this committee, if uh, charged to, to do that, could uh, look into that to ensure um, what what was done there to ensure the protection and to ensure that uh, and was this just simply a Hurricane Ida related um, something that was unexpected as has been suggested? I don't think we should just take that at its word. Um, we should look at that uh, to see if um, if the improvements were made to be able to protect our water supply and to ensure that uh, um, that we were preventing potential con contamination there. Um, and if not, then we, we should make sure that that happens. And if uh, something else needs to be done, uh, to prevent that from again happening in the future um, as well. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing, and um, it has been said already, and I'll say it again though, because it's worth reiterating, is the notification to to residents. Uh, I don't think enough has been talked about that at this point. And uh, to Councilman Solomon's suggestion about a wireless uh, um, alert system, um, emergency alert system, um, I think uh, uh, that needs to be uh, looked upon immediately and uh, enacted um, urgently. Uh, because there will, there will almost certainly be another, um, if not natural disaster, other concern with, which requires a boil water advisory or some other advisory unrelated to, to water and sewer and so forth. So we need to look into adopting that system 
Um, the, the second, the third thing around that in terms of communication, and I'll take it from a different angle, is the idea that uh, um, our communication is decentralized. And in a matter, in a time of crisis, um, it should be centralized. Um, we have an Office of Emergency Management, um, but we hear from all three different agencies and other folks as well um, outside of uh, OEM and MUA and Suez and um, as well as other agencies saying what they were doing around that and, and decision making um, and operations in a matter in a time of crisis should be all centralized. And so um, I think we need to in coming up with any plan in response, um, it should include the centralization and clarity of um, the lines of communication and the lines of command around that. Um, and um, and and this city council, I think, should uh, um, should memorialize that into law, right? And that we should put it into our our ordinances as it pertains to kind of the the organizational structure and how to respond to these um, these crises when they emerge. Um, and you know, without having done all the research on this, I would say office emergency management is obviously um, the most critical place and begin there. Um, the the fourth thing I'll talk about is the idea of. Uh, ensuring um, and then reiterating uh, the idea that the council members as well as all of the rest of the necessary stakeholders are at the table um, when talking about the response and the notification around that. We're kind of on a need to know basis, um, the city council, um, and uh, that should change um, for sure, right? So um, this um, goes back to as far as I've been a councilman um, when Hurricane Sandy hit uh, Jersey City, and we need to take the politics out of uh, uh -huh. um, out of these responses because it's an emergency and it's a crisis, um, re regardless of whether there's an election going on or not. And um, and so everybody should be at the table in these matters. Uh, same thing through COVID and everything else. Um, and uh, as much as possible, um, there should be a great deal of transparency around that to ensure that the folks are there um, and that uh, ideas and um, are being exchanged and uh, input is being um, delivered, um, including the council person's input mm -hmm. um, on all of those matters. Um, the, the last point I guess I'll make is around the, the delivery of the water itself and the communications around that. Certainly there can be um, better coordination um, and uh, I'll, I'll just reemphasize everything else that's already been said around that in terms of how to how to respond with that. Uh, there, there actually is one, one last point around this is that um, the response itself and the understanding that in fact there was whether it was the E. coli situation um, or this one or any other uh, boil water advisor. Um, determining who was um, accountable and responsible and involved in the notification. Um, and that goes to the point of trying to also uh, figure out centralization of uh, the chain of command there on this. Um, but also we need to hold people accountable. Um, there needs to be transparency around this and accountability. Um, we have now at least two, I, I believe there was a third one uh, just in the past year, um, boil water advisory type situations where um, where it was talked about getting the information out and we still um, don't get the clarity about these uh, these responses in terms of when information was um, ascertained and provided. Uh, and I believe the last time we did speak with uh, the MUA and Suez um, regarding Hurricane Ida's response um, that they said that they would provide a, um, a more detailed response on the timeline and, and how things broke down there with regard to who was uh, informed and what information was disseminated to which which parties and how it was disseminated out to the public ultimately, um, those notifications. Um, we need to get that information so that we can also make better decisions about moving forward, how to centralize that chain of command and so forth, um, but also to hold accountable those folks who maybe um, did not do um, the work that they were supposed to do because something, someone didn't get the job done, um, both in Hurricane Ida and E. coli, um, and there still needs to be held accountability held in both of those cases. Um, th those are the things I'm going to emphasize and. Um, uh, and um, I'll look forward to working with everybody moving forward uh, to improve the system. Great, thank you, Councilman. So if I can, you know, maybe summarize a, a potential list of goals and obviously we can write these and, and set them down to every, send them down to everybody. Um, you know, I think you know, the, the first goal is to review and improve emergency communications. And then I think within that, um, I should say communications to public. Um, and I think within that, I, I want to put um, a sort of translation. Um, 
as part of that, um, we want to put down um, the, what the Councilman Lavar said, which I talked about, which is these, the wireless alerts, like Amber Alerts. Um, but I can just briefly pause for a second. Today. You know, I talked to Director Kearse about these after the E. coli. Uh, I think Jersey City had applied to get the approvals to be able to send these out, but it doesn't sound like it's been approved yet. It sounds like it's been a delay on the, the DHS side for a long time, but working with him on understanding when we can get approvals and you know what, what, what the protocols would be for sending those out. Um, we want to talk about what Councilman Bogiano said, the, um, you know, kind of, I'll call them low tech means of communication, which are really important to get information and words out to everybody. Um, so cars mm -hmm. and other forms. Um, we talked about council president was talking about was the, um, the, um, the, the forms of communication and, and council friends area. So not, you know, making sure both people hear, but there's not panic. So the, the, the actual language and tone. Um, and responsibilities. Um, and then um, anything else on communications we'd want to add to the list of goals there. And I would just say that this is, I think there's three parties um, uh -huh. here. There's there's MUA, there's Suez, and then there's City of Jersey City, which you know, is OEM. And uh, so, so we'll kind of list those three parties there. The second, I think, is is review and improve internal communications. And this gets to what Councilman Navarro was talking about. Um, the issues of, you know, you know, account, how the council looped in, what Councilman Prince right. talked about, of, you know, all, all nine of us calling the same right. contact person. So it ends up being very inefficient for that contact person. Um, mm -hmm. So how do we funnel information and how do we both up and down the chain? Um, so how, how's the council both getting information and sharing it and then being able to convey the information that we're experiencing? Um, and then again, that's that's with all three, all three parties, MUA, Suez, and JC. Um, I think um, water distribution plans, um, to review and improve the water distribution plans, um, talk about Councilman Prezeri, you talked about the, the water tanks, but also the communications. So this will tie, I guess, into the communications too, um, specifically. So what what is needed, you know, for when we're doing water distribution? Um, I like to sort of add to specifically, you know, how how does this plan vary for different types of events? You know, obviously we experience a citywide, but Councilman, you talked about a, a neighborhood wide one. So what what are the what are those plans? Um, and then Councilman Lavaro, you talked about, and I'd say just, um, I'd say, I, I guess, review water infrastructure plan. Um, so that's determining if we think the infrastructure is up to snuff, so to speak. And then I think the last one would be maybe just sort of, I'd call it maybe, you know, review of prior decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, and this gets to the accountability piece to see, you know, what, what actions were taken. Um, any, anything else? You know, James, also um, what um, Rolando said is true. Um, we have to come up with some type of legislation that when sure. there's a state of emergency, that the whole council is there. We have to. You know, uh, we should know automatically, you know, in a state of emergency where to report to. So we need to write legislation sure. on that. So we'll know automatically if there's something we know all we know where to go to. Right. You know, we'll be at the table because each ward is different. And I don't think everybody understands that. That's why every all of us must be at that table. Yep. You know, uh, Years ago, we had our own water department here in Jersey City, and it was a fantastic water department. And I'll uh -huh. be quite honest with you, I think we should go back to having our own water department. The people yeah. running it were great, and, uh, you know, it right. was a, uh, they did a great job. I also have to say, uh, Saturday night, we had a water main break up the corner for me. I called Suez on Saturday night about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. They responded right away. I was shocked. Okay. But, I guess no. <laughs> they know we upset. Yeah. Right. And, uh, <laughs> In fact, they're out there now working. <clears throat> yeah. um, 
Great. Does any any is that work for everyone for other our list of goals? Uh -huh. And then my yeah. thought would be if it works for everybody is for us to do, you know, one meeting basically at each of these goals. Uh -huh. um, so I think that would end up being it looks like five meetings. Okay. Um, so one is would be communications. Second would be uh, water distribution. Third would be infrastructure. Um, and then emergency, like the, what you just said, legislation. And then last one might be review of all the prior incidents. Uh -huh. So that would, I think, actually I count that as four. Um, and then we could basically try to schedule those four out. And I was, my thought was envisioning maybe two meetings in November and two in December. Sure. Um, but sort of, if this time works, so to Mondays, yeah. we, can, we can obviously schedule it with everybody. Um, um, and then what we would want to do is talk about who who we want in each meeting. And obviously we can do some of that via email in advance, but mm -hmm. uh, obviously I thought, you know, for each one, MUA, Suez, Sardio, Jersey City would ask the representatives from those agencies to be there at the meetings. Okay. Good job. Yeah. So yeah. Kat Solomon, um, just uh, yeah. with regard to getting those parties to the table. Yep. And having it be a productive conversation yep. um, around that, um, who, who will be responsible, I guess, for ensuring that uh, those parties come prepared with information to address, um, so that we're not uh, yeah. kind of chasing Wait. it down, so to speak, right. as to the, who, who was trying to get the information that would ascertain who was responsible for this communication or that communication or, or not doing that communication. Right. Um, or for example, looking at past decisions. I mean, we could just look at, um, I believe tomorrow there'll be a shutdown of um, PSE&G, for example, and this is unrelated uh -huh. to Suez, but there'll be a shutdown tomorrow of uh, PSE&G around the beacon. I think there'll be a power uh -huh. shutdown and whatnot. Um, and so um, uh, they've done a whole series of communications from what I understand, and that, that could prove as a, <coughs> um, as a good model for um, kind of how to, uh, um, enact some of those similar um, shutdowns up from the, the water and sewer side and so forth, um, um, or or looking at other past incidents that maybe not necessarily the entire Hurricane Ida, but them looking at other incidents that could be scaled up. Um, as was discussed, maybe there were other shutdowns of uh, water main breaks and things of that nature that could be looked at um, to see how those were handled as well. Um, so so my, my question is really just, who's going to handle that if it's your office or somebody else's it's a big slightly big it's a big task frankly to get mm -hmm. get that information together and uh to get those parties at the table i'm happy to to take the lead on that and basically send a notice to all everybody say okay let's say we're having the meeting in right. two weeks on emergency communications um and ask every member of the committee in advance what are the questions and or mm -hmm. documents you want in advance of that meeting and we can compile all of those and send those to the folks that were we're going to invite to the meeting and obviously you know they they you know we can't guarantee they're going to come prepared but we can we can take the my office and take the lead on mm -hmm. all those and just sending those requests out and we'll you know so basically we can request from all of you two weeks in advance and then request mm -hmm. from the people we're meeting with a week in advance and just sort of follow that schedule and we can lay that out in a full schedule after this for everyone sees it once we once we put the meeting dates on for everybody yeah that's good mm -hmm. That sounds good. Um, I, I guess I would suggest um, yep. perhaps if uh, um, it's my understanding that uh, the mayor and the administration are fully supportive of this uh, this process, this undertaking, and um, perhaps they can um, help uh, by dedicating some staff who will act as a, um, a liaison to be able to work with your office to be able to, sure. to um, corral all of those different parties and to make sure that we get their full cooperation um, in this sure. investigative yep. process. Sure, I can I can ask the mayor and, and chief of staff if they're willing to have one of the yeah. mayor aides sort of serve as an adjunct to the committee or the formal, yeah. but help us out and sit on all the mm -hmm. meetings, help us with the document requests. Sure. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So as we're as we're starting to think about the legislative piece too, it might be helpful to have somebody from the law department as well. I will ask mm -hmm. uh, for council to also. Let's see if you can have someone sit with us. Uh -huh. Great. 
Ready. So I think the follow-up uh, for us is we're going to send out in a couple of days all the notes and then a tentative mm -hmm. schedule for okay. November, December meetings with the topic of each meeting and then the timeline in which we'd need feedback from all the committee members and then um, feedback from the invited participants. Mm -hmm. Great. That's good. That's great. All righty, great. Anything else we wanted to touch base on before we wrap up? No, I think we got a good spot here. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Clerk, you want to close thank us you, out? Thank you. So before we um, before we do that, um, have we set a date for the next meeting? Would you like? We haven't. Okay. If it's we'll okay with you, this. Clerk, what I'll do is, is send out a proposed set of times for everybody, um, and then confirm it with everybody, and then we'll we'll get you the times, not just for the next meeting, but for the schedule, so then there can be more easily sunshine moving forward. That would be great. I mean, I just. I think these Mondays, Monday at 11 is great on my end, but we'll send it yeah, out. Yeah, mine's too. Monday works best for me too. Yeah. OK, that, that'll work. That'll be great. All right. With that being said, then, can I have a motion to adjourn at 11.38 AM? Motion. Second. Motion made by Councilperson Solomon. May I have a second? Second. Second. That second, I'm going to have to give to Councilperson Baggiano. On a motion to adjourn at 11.38 a.m., all council members present by acclamation, please say aye. 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 We are out of here at 11.38 a.m. Thank you so much, Council President, uh, Council Person Solomon, Chairperson. Thank you so much, everybody behind the scenes, all the administration that's around, and everyone that was involved with making this meeting possible. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So teamwork makes a dream work. Stay safe. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Good night. Bye bye. Good Have a good day. Yeah, Have a good, good, good day. day. I was ready to say good night with you, Council President. I know. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are all.